Okay, this is going to be a walkthrough for the funds project assignment part 5. In order to complete this assignment, we're going to need to take the parts 2 and part 4 that we've already completed and combine them to do a very similar exercise um, but using what will be a portfolio that's a combination of the stock fund and the bond fund that we've been previously looking at. So the steps are going to be, first we're going to get the monthly rate of return, which is just the regular rate of return for each month that we've been doing so far, um, and the excess returns, which is just the regular return minus the T-bill monthly yield. Then we'll need to compute the average standard deviation, beta, sharp, and trainer ratios. We've done that for the other portfolios, so that shouldn't be anything new to you. And then, we'll go, then we're going to scroll up here, and there's a form for submitting the results and a Dropbox for submitting the Excel file. So we'll turn those in and it's all due by April 6th. So I'll walk you through how to do it. Hopefully you can follow along. I'm going to use this. So what I did is I downloaded the sample spreadsheet for part two. Yours should look very similar. It'll be specific to your fund, but this is the, I believe it's called AFAX was the, um, the sample spreadsheet or the sample uh, fund used for fund two and then I made up some numbers so these won't be exactly the same as what you saw on the sample spreadsheet but they'll be very similar so what we're gonna need is the stock fund and the bond fund which would be from part two and part four from what you've already done we're gonna need the t-bill yield which is the risk-free rate t-bills are risk-free the SPY which is the market so when we talk about the market return, or um, the res when we're going to talk about the regression lines, that's going to be compared to the S&P, SPY. Then we're going to have our stock fund, our bond fund, and then this page is the excess returns, which is blank. We're going to fill that in, and then we're going to do the beta and sharp ratios. Uh, I mean, the, the beta, the trainer, and the sharp ratios on this page as well. So the first thing we're going to need is some dates. All of the dates for all of these funds and these spreadsheets are the same so I'm just going to copy it from the T-bill page but you can see that we start from 2013 December um, this is actually the change from December to January so this is the this is the same date so because this ends on January 1st this is actually for the month of December well it ends on January 2nd but January 1st is a holiday um, same for the stock fund, the bond fund, all of these. So these, this De December of 2013 corresponds to from December 1st to January 1st. That's the month of December. So I'm going to copy that year over to here. And we're just going to use the same dates for this whole thing. So then we have the SPY. I'm going to wait on, on inserting that one. I'm actually going to do the stock fund first. And we don't need all of this data. The portfolio that we're going to build is actually just going to be a portfolio of the returns, so we can copy those returns over. One thing to do is see if you have this formula here, G2 divided by G3 minus 1, you're not going to want to import that formula. You just want to copy it, so you can use Control c to copy. Go over to Excess Returns, and when you paste it, do right-click and paste Special, and then paste just the values. We don't need the formula, because the formula will give us an error if we try to paste it in. But if we paste the values, then you see we just get the number. We get about a 3% loss there, a 1.5% gain there. We don't have that divided, that C2 divided by whatever, you know, we don't need that stuff. So this is the stock ROR. Yours might just say ROR. If it does, I, I recommend putting stock in there or the ticker for whatever ticker you're using. Um, this is made up number, so this isn't a ticker to use. So I'm just gonna say the word stock. We do the same thing for bond fund. So instead of, we don't want this G4 divided by G5 stuff, I'm just going to highlight that, control C, go over to excess returns, right click, paste special, and just paste values. Hit OK. So now we have just those numbers. So we have the stock fund, and we have the bond fund. We have the times that they're there for. So what we want to do is build a portfolio. Now, a portfolio is just a combination of different assets. You know, a regular stock portfolio would have like seven different stocks in it or however many you have. A bond portfolio would have a bunch of bonds. This portfolio is 
a portfolio that has just two assets in it, a stock fund and a bond fund. That's all there is. And we know that the stock, that the portfolio is going to be built with a 60% asset allocation to the stocks and a 40% allocation to the bonds. Now, if we just convert that to decimal, it's 0.6 and 0.4, right? So we say a 0.6, right? That's 60% times the return on the stocks oops we need an equal sign in there 0.6 times the return on the stocks plus a 0.4 times the return on the bonds that's 60 percent stocks plus 40 percent bonds that's all the portfolio is now normally i would recommend putting in some uh, parentheses here but in this case we don't actually need them because the multiplication will happen first before the addition the addition but I'm going to put them in there just for illustrative purposes so everyone can tell um, what what we're doing. So it's this is what's called a weighted average. We have 60% of the weight is in the stock and 40% of the weight is in the bond. I'm going to hit enter. And that's the return for the portfolio for that particular month. We can go ahead and drop that down by double clicking that square on the bottom. And we copy that formula all the way down to the bottom. You can see it goes the whole way down. And that's the return. Wow, that's a very large return that year, 109% return. Um, just happened to be that way for some reason. But now we can see that this is the return for each of those months. Now when I copied the data over earlier, it actually copied over some of this data. And we can go back and get what those are equal to. So that's the mean standard deviation beta uh, sharp and trainer ratios. So now we have those over here for the stock fund and the bond fund and if we wanted it for here too well we're, that's what we're going to do actually that's what we need to um, figure out so we're going to say equals average of this whole row so this is the average of the portfolio right and you could include the word portfolio because Excel's smart enough to know not to include words so even if you highlight that word portfolio, it won't mess it up. Now we want the standard deviation, which is S T D E V. Norm so depending on what year of Excel you might have a S T D E V dot S. That means sample. That's the one you would want to use if you have it. I have a slightly older version of Excel, so I don't have that choice. I just have standard deviation. And I'm gonna copy all of those values. Now I want the sharp ratio. The sharp ratio is the return of the portfolio minus the average risk-free return, which we don't have on here yet, divided by the standard deviation. So we're gonna have to get some risk-free returns in here. Um, I'm actually we don't we probably have it on the T-bill yield tab. So we'll just go over here and look. There we go. So that's the average return for the risk-free rate right there. So what I can do is go. Sharp ratio is equals this, it's the average return of the portfolio, minus the T bill yield average return, divided by, then I can go back here and say the standard deviation. Now we do want to make sure that we do this the right way. So we're going to do the top part of that in parentheses. So we do the subtraction first, and then we divide by the excess, the, it's not, it that says excess returns because that's the tab name, but it's actually the standard deviation of the portfolio. So our sharp ratio is about 0.34, which is good. A sharp ratio should typically be close to 0.4, hopefully, it, but it varies. So there could be sharp ratios out there of a 0.2 or a 0.1, and that wouldn't be um, completely ridiculous. Although for what we're doing with a stock and bond fund, you should see somewhere in the 0.3 range up to 0.4 would be typical. Now beta we're going to get with our regression analysis. If we go up to the top, we want to do a regression of the portfolio versus the SPY because beta measures a correlation to the S&P 500. So what we want to do is highlight all the returns. I'm going to do control C to copy. I'm going to go back to this tab. I'm going to do control V to paste. Uh, but again, I don't actually, I'm not going to do control V because I don't want those formulas. So I'm going to paste special again. I'm going to paste values just like we did before. Hit OK. And I have SPY rate of return all the way down there and see they all match up. 
So I'm actually going to change those to percentages so we're all on the same scale. Um, in fact, I'm going to change all of those to two decimals. Okay, so now what we want to do is have the SPY listed and then actually we want our portfolio listed because Excel wants it in that certain order. So what we can do is copy and then paste that same thing right on the other side of it. These two columns are exactly the same. That's not a problem. What we need is we need the SPY to be listed and then the portfolios to be listed. And that's because the way that Excel makes graphs, it'll take the first um, column and make that the x-axis and it'll take the second column and make that the y-axis. And if we did it this way, then that would make our portfolio the x-axis, and that's not what we want. We want this order. So I'm going to highlight this whole range. I'm going to go to Insert, and we want a scatter plot. And it's this first one, Scatter with Only Markers. And that's what we have. So you can see it's a very, it's mostly linear um, scatter plot that we have here. We have one huge outlier, which is, I mean, that happens sometimes. Sometimes markets act crazy. Nobody knows why. So I'm going to just move this up here so it's closer to the top. Um, that way it's all kind of compact and nice and neat. So we have this scatter plot, and what we want to do is we want to get a beta out of this. The beta is actually the slope of the line that best fits this scatter plot. So if I were to click on any of these points, see how it highlights them, I can right click and say add trend line. Then I get this menu that pops up. I want a linear trend line. There's all kinds of different trend lines that you could do. Linear is the one that we want. Uh, we don't need forecasting. We actually just want to do display equation and display R square value on the chart. Hit close. And it puts this text right here. I'm just going to drag that text over if I can. Drag that text over to the key, the legend on the side. Okay, now you can see there's this. they drew this black line across here, right? That's the line of best fit. And that slope, given as y equals mx plus b, the m is the slope. It's 0.7348. That is our beta. Our alpha, which we're actually not using in this, but you might need to know later, our alpha is 0 0.009, which is um, how much excess uh, return is generated for risk. And the r square value is just a measure of how close this line actually is to being perfectly correlated. And it's actually an r square of 0.4, which isn't great but it's good enough we'll d deal with that later so we know that our beta is given as the m the slope value of 0.7348 so remember that 0.7348 and we take it down here and put it in 0.7348 great now all we need is our trainer ratio and the trainer ratio is almost the same as the sharp ratio it has the same numerator the top part but actually is divided by the beta instead of divided by the the um, standard deviation. So I'm going to say equals uh, the mean minus, I'm going to go back over to T-bill, the T-bill mean. I'm going to close, oh, and then I'm going to divide by the beta. I'm going to go up in there and I'm going to add in the parentheses so that we make sure our math is done correctly. Hit enter and we get 0.03. I've been seeing some trainer ratios about 0.01 for most people. I think that's pr pretty typical. I have some made-up numbers in here so that my example doesn't match anyone else's. Um, 0.03 is probably fine, considering we have a sharp ratio that's pretty close to what we're expecting. This trainer ratio of 0.03 is pretty close to what we'd be expecting, so I'm going to say that that's okay. So that's what we need to do. If you go back on Blackboard Learn, you'll see that there's a spot to input those values. We'll make sure we did everything, but we um, got the average return, we got the standard deviation, we got the beta, sharp ratio, and training ratio for the portfolio. We got the monthly rate of returns. You need that first in order to get any of those, so we're good. We got a 60-40, so I think we have everything done. Um, good thing it's not April 6th yet, because I can turn this in ahead of time on the form for submitting the results, and then the Dropbox for submitting the Excel spreadsheet. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, good luck. And thanks for watching.